Hello, this is Chad from Rykart Electronic Innovations here to do a walkthrough on how to update Rykart PSR system software using the service tool. So to start out, I'm going to power up the Rykart system. We're going to run virtual terminal on my desktop. To do that, I'm going to run the, the farm display. I'm going to go ahead and power up the Rykart system. Flip on the rocker switch in the tractor cab, for example. You'll hear a click within the Rykart controller and it should load right up on the virtual terminal interface. So one good thing to do in practice is to note down the version of software before you update. Um, to do that, you would hold down the wrench button. And if you're running an older software, you'll have to page over to the icon that looks like a blue circle with an eye in it. That's the info page. If you press OK, here you'll see the version of software. It should start with an 02 period, then a three digit number, and maybe some extra version information. Uh, it's a good practice to note that information down. And then in addition to that, we can read that information out uh, with the service tool. So I'm going to go ahead and boot up now the Reichart service tool. I'll bring it on over here. So in the Reichart service tool, it allows us to do two different things. We can read out settings from the PSR system as well as we can update software. So the first thing we're going to do is before we update software, we're going to pull the settings before updating. So we have a fallback point if we have any information we want to collect after updating. So the first thing I do here is I hit the icon with the uh, nine squares. This is our different applications. Um, the program right now within service tool has two different applications. We have flash and PSR param. So the one we want to select is PSR param. And from here, we can hit request to read in settings, or you can select load file, which will load in a template, which will fill in all the variable names and descriptions. And typically every version of Reichart software has a parameter list or a documentation template to go off of. So go ahead and click load file. And here you would navigate to your version of software. So in this case, it was 2.164.001. Here I'll select this parameter list english.psr and you can see now it brings in all your variable names and your descriptions and then the last step is to pull in the values so here it says value 0 default 0 when I click request the PSR system will output all the information provided to the program to be saved uh, for backing up and for reference so if I click request you see now the information is all filling in uh, it'll take a few seconds and then you'll notice the icons are all back to being yellow or selectable. From here I hit save. And you can pick any directory wherever you want to save this. I'll just call this test before update. You can give it whatever name you want to call it. Uh, maybe note the version information in there too as a reference. The machine information. Some just general details so you can uh, go back to that information as needed. And then go ahead and click save. And it'll save that file to your computer. Uh, just to touch on that, there are 500 unique parameters that are stored within the system. Some of the most important stuff that would be inf interesting information would be related to uh, your settings. So things like your calibration settings, your valve settings, things like that. And so this might be the kind of information that might be a good point of reference if you update the system and you want to re-enter your vehicle code, uh, reset your system, you want to know what your old calibration values were. They'll be right here available to pull. After pulling that information, the next step would be to try to update software. So what we would do now is select the box with the uh, nine squares in it. Go back to your applications and we're going to select flash. When we select flash, it's going to immediately send a message to the Rykart system to prepare it to update software. So when I hit flash, if you watch over here in our virtual terminal interface, you'll get a notification and ask, do you want to update software? You notice also over in the uh, service tool, it says scanning, it says please re restart all devices slash ECU now, then click OK. So if you have newer Reichart software, you'll get this notification automatically. And when I click yes, the Reichart controller will automatically power itself off and then power back up in an update mode. If you're running older Reichart software, you'll want to unplug or switch off the Rykart controller, then switch it back on, and then after doing that, hit the OK button. If I hit OK before, it won't work. 
you have to first power cycle the right cart, then press OK. So I'll go ahead and hit yes. And so the right card actually will no longer appear because it's booting up in an update mode. Go ahead and press the OK button. And from here you have the serial number of the controller. If you had more than one controller uh, in this update mode, you'd see more listed. We just want to make sure that this matches the controller that you want to update. From here, select the pencil icon, the low file path to the right. And now we want to select the version of software we want to update. So right now we have the old version 2.164.001. I'm going to go ahead and go to a newer version of software. We're going to go to uh, 2.180. And here we need to pick the appropriate hex file. So to denote, there's going to be two different hex file versions. There's a iBox LT and an iBox MC. The LT is the old silver box. The MC is the black plastic box. So we we'll want to select the MC controller in this case. That's what I have out here at my desk while I'm updating. So I just select that file. It'll fill in that information. And then the next step here is to click update by selecting the lightning bolt icon. So I click the lightning bolt. It'll start deleting the program memory. And afterwards, it'll start flashing new memory. And this process, depending on bus traffic and what's going on um, with the computer, it may take anywhere from two to three, maybe four or five minutes, worst case. But we'll go ahead and uh, crop this part out and speed it up for you a little bit. So when the update is complete, you'll notice that the bar changes green, it says programming complete. Uh, there's a nice little shortcut button in the bottom right hand corner. If you click this icon, it looks like an asterisk inside of a circle. It will actually power up the right card controller automatically. And at this point, the right card should start to load up back on your virtual terminal display. If it's a much newer version, the user interface changes, which means it needs to upload a new object pool. And this process also may take upwards of a minute depending on the CAN bus traffic and the speed of the display. Once the object pool is fully loaded, go ahead and just select it. And now you'll see our splash screen or our startup screen again. So that was one warning that will pop up when you update software sometimes. So depending on how far apart the versions are, you may get a warning like this. And what it's simply saying is, is when you go from an old version of software to a newer version of software, some of the settings in the background may not actually mesh. Uh, as, as we improve performance with different functions, we do add new parameters. And so some of the old settings, those parameters may not have existed. So they are now out of range and they need to be set to a new default value. So this is just a warning to notify you of that. And on that same point, it's probably good practice after updating software to re-enter the vehicle code. So the way to do that would be to go to the pin menu, type in your code, and then here go to the teach menu and then you go to the tractor icon letter A. And from here is where you would actually overwrite your vehicle code. So right now I have a code here for a generic tractor with a uh, Danfoss uh, ratio metric valve. We're going to go ahead and just overwrite this value. And just be aware or a warning that when you do this, it'll set all your settings back to default. So this is why it's important to take note of your previous settings before you do this process. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these boxes and then press OK. So the same code is still here, but now I'm going to hit OK again. It's going to prompt me to save these settings. And as soon as I hit OK to save, the system will beep twice. And at this point, all my calibrations are set back to defaults, including all the background settings. And you shouldn't see those kind of warnings. Another thing that's good practice after updating software, probably should have done that first, would be to uh, check your version information. Version information in newer software, instead of the I icon, it's actually in our diagnostic menu. So you select diagnostics, and then if you page one to the left, you'll see here your controller type and your version. So this is, this is the information you wanna note down. 
Um, and then it would be good practice again to pull settings a second time after you've done a full calibration of everything, if you've re-entered your vehicle code and then you have that information for reference as well. And again, it's the same process. You click on the nine boxes within the service tool program. You'd select PSR param, load a new file. So now we're at version 2.180 because some of the descriptions may be different. So we have a different uh, uh, content fill. And then here we hit request again. And one thing you're gonna notice right away, it's not communicating. And the reason why it's not communicating, and this is something depending on your version of the service tool, you may have to close and reopen this program and just reestablishes communication. So now what we wanna do is close the program and we're going to go ahead and reopen the program. And we'll do the process again, pulling settings. Parameter, load, pick the file, hit request. Wait a few seconds. Now they're all loaded, hit save. And we'll just say test after update save. And now we have both the settings before and after the update. And that is about it. Well, thank you for listening.